This is a quick overview of the Pi Lag Tester Pro, a tool for measuring input lag and response time for televisions, computer displays, and anything that has an HDMI input. The way it works is it displays a black background and then flashes on briefly a set of three white probes, which you can see happening right now. And my question is, when it sends the video frame that has those white probes to the TV, how long does the TV take before it actually starts to display those probes? Right now, we have our sensor placed down here at the bottom of the display, and we're plotting on the screen what sort of brightness it measures. So in white up here, we have the period of time where the frame of the three probes has been sent, but the TV hasn't responded. It's not zero because there is, of course, some amount of black light bleeding through the black. Once the TV starts to actually respond to the probe, that's drawn in red here. So the transition from white to red tells you the input lag of the TV. That's not all you really want to know. You also know, want to know how long it takes to display the actual image that's being sent. And that's going to be the response time plus the lag, and that's drawn here in red. So when we get to the transition from red to yellow, that's when the TV has more or less finished drawing the frame of video that it was sent. And then it just shows the steady state in yellow. Now, in addition to this fancy uh, plot, we also just have the number summarized over here. And red is the input lag. And then in yellow is input lag plus the response time of the TV. And of course, you can measure the TV's performance in multiple locations. Right now I'm measuring at the bottom of the screen, but you can measure it at the middle or top, depending on not whether or not you want to factor in the amount of time it takes for the screen to be refreshed into the measure input lag. And I'd actually argue that's a good idea because even when being fed a 60 hertz video signal, some displays will actually refresh faster than 60 hertz. So measuring at the bottom gives you most honest measure of what the input lag is going to be. So let's take a look at some of the other features of this lag tester. Um, right now we're looking at uh, 720p. Using the keyboard we can quickly switch to other modes, for instance by typing TV480i we can see what the uh, response time is for interlaced content. And that's uh, obviously going to be pretty different from progressive content. With some TVs, there's further variation depending on the resolution. So to test for that kind of thing, you could just manually select different resolutions and run the lag tester, or you can use a script that will measure all of that in one go. So let's demonstrate this script real quick. It's called test all and if you just type that you get a quick reminder of how it works basically it's test all and you put a space and then you give a handy name that you can use to remember what display you were testing with when you go back and look at the data later hit enter and it opens up in the desired resolution and at the top of the screen here it's telling you uh, what part of the screen it wants you to measure. So I need to move my sensor up to the top of the screen. And now I can hit spacebar and it'll start recording. And depending on how much the uh, input lag varies between frames, you could just make a couple of recordings or you could record for a really long time. It's totally up to you. When you're done, you hit escape and automatically progresses on to the next resolution. Now, this is going to take a little while to uh, measure all the different resolutions. Not going to be the most interesting thing ever, so I'm just going to fast forward to the point at which I'm done. But I'll just mention that the only thing you really have to do here uh, once you start this script is midway through, you need to move the sensor from the top of the screen to the bottom of the screen. So it's nearly but not 100% automated at this point. So fast forwarding, we have the results of running that script, and it shows you the response time for 
four different resolutions measure both at the top of the screen and the bottom of the screen, and both in terms of input lag and full response. Now, this is just a simple script, so if those of you have a little bit of familiarity with Unix or um, cut your teeth on MS-DOS back in the day, it's very easy to add more resolution to that script. Of course, you can also just measure anything you want manually, too. If you type list modes, you get a list of the modes that the TV reports to being able to support, and it's pretty easy to choose one of them and see what happens. So let's try one of these other ones here. So this is a mode that's specifically useful for watching movies, 24 hertz. And then we can see here whether or not the TV actually synchronizes to that. So you don't really care about lag when you're watching a movie, but you might like to know that the TV is actually really displaying 24 hertz and not just pretending. And so what you would look at then is whether or not the lag is consistent across frames. And you can see that it is pretty consistent. It varies a little bit because the backlight flicker is not exactly synchronized with drawing the frames. But a few milliseconds isn't going to make much of a difference in terms of smoothness of motion, whereas many TVs that pretend to support uh, 24 hertz actually just continue to draw at 60 hertz and uh, occasionally uh, drop frames. So this is handy even for uh, non-gamers making sure that their displays are doing what you want them to do. The other thing that's handy about this setup is that because the sensor is attached with a piece of tape, let's just zoom in for a moment here to get a better look at what that looks like, um, you can just leave it on there and by doing that you're able to uh, mess around with the settings on the TV and find out if they actually make any difference for input lag or not. Uh, remarkably, a lot of TVs claim to have a game mode, but it doesn't make any difference in terms of the response time. That's true for older TVs. I think newer TVs are not as bad about that. And then sometimes you'll find that settings that aren't really explicitly listed as game mode settings still make a difference for response time, uh, noise reduction, for instance. Uh, but sometimes things you think would actually hurt you, like smooth motion, actually help. Um, and that's because some TVs, when you tell them to use smooth motion, actually draw the screen at a faster rate, uh, such as 120 hertz. And so that means that if you're measuring the input lag at the bottom of the screen, it's now uh, 8 milliseconds faster than it would be otherwise. So having a tool like this lets you really characterize your own screen and find out how your own settings change the response time. And of course, it lets you measure it for resolutions that none of the mainstream review sites are going to bother looking at, like 240p or 480i or whatever. Now, to be honest, not every display supports 240p over HDMI. Um, of course, there are ways to get around that. You can buy devices like this that let you take HDMI and spit out a component or a composite video and then you can measure input lag off of that. Uh, you know, basically, the sky's the limit here on what you want to do if only you want to spend a little bit of money. Speaking of money, let's talk about the components you need for this. So first and foremost, you need the PyLag tester. That's just a little black box, nothing much to see here. And then you need some kind of Raspberry Pi. So this is the Pi Zero. Nominally speaking, it costs $5, but of course, no one's going to send you a $5 computer in the mail for free. You've got to pay for shipping and handling, so the true cost is about $10. And of course, you're going to need some adapters. Now, this thing over here is a power bank. I find it really handy to be able to just drag this whole collection of stuff around without having to power it off of a wall wart. Uh, but that's obviously not really necessary. It's just a convenience factor for my needs in particular. The Pi lag tester plugs into the header port on the Raspberry Pi with this simple six pin plug. And then the software that you need to be able to do all this is freely available as a SD card image that you write to a, a four gigabyte or larger SD card. Uh, the reason I distribute it that way 
is that there's a lot of configuration tweaks necessary to make the PyOS uh, act as a real-time OS, and it's way too much of a pain in the butt to modify a standard installation. It just makes sense just to deliver it all as a single image file. And that means that in order to use this, you literally just plug the SD card in and turn on your Pi, and it's ready to go. Let's demonstrate that now. So I'm just going to reboot the computer. OK, so this is what would happen when you power it up. It goes through a whole bunch of Linuxy things that we don't care about. And then I'll just keep on waiting here. I won't fast forward just to give you a sense of how long it takes to actually get this thing going. If you're using something faster than a Pi Zero, it boots up a lot quicker. But the Pi Zero is perfectly sufficient for displaying the video modes that we care about. So um, I don't really recommend spending more unless you particularly are interested in the video modes that a Pi 4 supports. So there we go. This is the screen where it's ready to start accepting input. As you can see, there's a fairly brief quick start set of instructions. It actually lists pretty much every single instruction you need to use in order to run it and the syntax. Uh, yes, it is Linux, but honestly, uh, anyone who's ever used MS-DOS will feel completely at home here. They're just a single command with uh, sometimes one or two arguments, where the arguments are just the names of files you want to save the results to. And uh, it logs in without even requiring a password, which of course you can change if you want, but why would you bother to have a password on a tool like this? All right, to start the app, just type LT, and there you are. So that's pretty much all the stuff that uh, is worth briefly explaining. You can read the manual to find out more. I just want to quickly point out that there are some other tools built in that are kind of handy. For instance, here's one that measures the um, aliasing for your screen, just displays a checkerboard, which honestly isn't going to look like anything here. You can also display it with much bigger dots. And uh, you can use that to determine how much cropping is happening on your screen. Another useful tool for checking for aliasing is the lines command, just draw some lines. But uh, honestly, I've seen a lot of displays that really mangle these sorts of stimuli. And it's one of the things that really makes for an unpleasant retro gaming experience when you're looking at 480i and they're throwing away a lot of the content or displaying it in a blurry form. You know, when you, when you only have 480 vertical pixels, you really want them to look their best. And sadly, a lot of TVs don't bother. So there you go. That is the Pi like Duster Pro coming soon to your favorite electronic store or not.